Hi guys, it's Malenka, and today I'll be doing another episode of my plushie restoration and customization series. I know I haven't done one in like a month, but things have been very hectic around the holiday season. I just could not get to post another video, but we're back at it, and we'll be choosing another plushie for today. So I have this like big huge bin of plushies right here. I recently went to the Goodwill bins and got a whole bunch of plushies that no one else wanted. I was like literally the only person buying plushies and yes I did get some strange looks but you know what? I did not care. So today we'll be customizing this little teddy bear right here and if you're new here I'm Malenka and I restore plushies that I buy from the thrift store. I usually only buy the plushies that need major restorations or wholesale plushies but I do get some really nice plushies that I later restore a little bit and I put them up for sale so they can have another chance at life again. Alright so this little teddy bear right here is absolutely adorable. He's a little wholesale teddy bear and the reason I can tell is by the quality of his fur and the quality of the plushie as a whole. I've gotten really good over the months of telling what's a wholesale plushie and what's a really nice quality plushie and this one is a wholesale plushie but that does not matter to me because all plushies are created equal and i cannot wait to get started on this little plushy customization right here so the theme of this little plushy is if you're new here i come up with themes for my little plush customization so theme for this little plushy will be a waffle theme i have done a little pancake theme i want my little plushy dogs but this time i'll make it a bit different now let's begin the restoration. So I haven't used this like tripod in a pretty long time, so I have to get it adjusted first. And we switch to a new background for today's custom. So here's a little teddy bear right here. He's absolutely adorable, like I've said before. Super fluffy, super cozy. And we need to get him fixed up though because he does have a little string sting at the back of his head. We'll just do a little quick fix with that and I will also be trimming off some of the fur around his eyes because I cannot see his eyes at all and I feel like his eyes should be shown because they're super cute. So as you can see here, I'm taking my little scissors and I'm trimming around the fur around his eyes because the fur around his eyes kind of got meshed into his eyes and they're not really visible so we're gonna like snip around his eyes real quick and hopefully he'll look really cute. I'm also getting rid of the stream behind his head. Not sure what it's doing there, but we're just going to cut it off. It probably came from some of the stitching on his eyes and nose, but we'll just snip that off and we're good to go. And it also looks like someone already cut his little tag off. And by the feel of it, I can tell this was definitely a wholesale plushy tag. So I'm just going to finish up the job and make sure to snip it as close to the first as possible so that it looks very good and seamless. All right, now let's start working on his face. Like I said, I'm gonna be snipping off the fur around his eyes. It's really easy. And yeah, I'll just be showing you how I do that. I do that to some of my plushies, not all of them, because it usually depends on what the plushie looks like. Sometimes I like the plushie to have fur around its eyes. Sometimes I don't, but you know, it's personal preference. <laughs> And this is one that I finished. I only did one. I had to show you guys the major difference it made. And honestly, I feel like the plushie looks 10 times cuter without the eyes around its fur. So now I'm taking my little needle right here. And I'm pricking out the fur that has been sewn into with the embroidery. I usually do this with all my plushies. Just pricking out the fur so it looks really cute and fluffy. All right. So now that the restorations is over, let's start the customization. So as I told you guys, we're making a waffle themed little teddy bear. And what has what's on waffles? butter and maple syrup so right here i made this little cube of polymer clay i baked it it's already nice and finished i also sanded it because we'll be painting it a nice yellowy butter color and i also made it round because butter is like kind of round it's not like a perfect square it's round and i made a huge thick piece of butter and i also scored the back because i'll be gluing onto the fur and that way there's a nice strong hold Right, so the colors I'll be using is this little yellow acrylic paint. I forgot the name of this little paint, but it's a nice like pale yellow. I'll also be using some white paint. It's a matte paint in snow white. All right, so I'm gonna start mixing my paint. I did do equal parts of yellow and white, but we'll see how it goes. It's like my second time mixing like a butter yellow color, and I'm hoping to achieve a really nice 
yellowish but like not that yellow you'll see in the end and once i get that color we're gonna start painting the little butter cube just doing one simple coat i'll probably do two coats so that it looks very nicely painted <laughs> After we've done two coats and the paint is dry, we're going to start making the maple syrup. This is probably going to be the hardest part because my last maple syrup puppy that I did, uh, it was a pretty small plushie, so the butter was kind of tiny. So for this method, we're going to be trying something different. I have this little piece of plastic. It's kind of like the plastic that you get like most clothing stores, and it's really durable. And I will basically put um, hot glue on there, and then when it's dry, I'll just peel it off. Kind of like a mold and i know what you guys are thinking you're probably thinking what in the world is she doing well i want the maple syrup bottom to have a nice flat surface so i'm just like smoothing out the plastic that way maple syrup can rest can like you know dry evenly and flat and i'll also be marking it like a spot now when i'm applying on the hot glue i'm gonna apply it on around the butter first and i'll make a little drizzle on top and we're gonna let and we're gonna see what's gonna happen cross my fingers and let's see what happens all right guys i think i did it um it's still drying i think it's gonna work but we'll see i don't want to jinx myself but i'm like hoping it works and this method actually turned out a lot better than my last method so it looks super realistic and i cannot wait all right so it's dry and i'm gonna start peeling it off it looks like it dried completely hard so that's super and we're gonna try and see if you can peel it off in one piece oh my gosh you can see that one corner is like so stubborn it does not want to come off this plastic like it does not want to come off yes it's coming off yeah i was like struggling during this part so i was like super nervous and eventually it comes off that was really hard not sure why that one piece would not come off but here's the finished product. I absolutely love the way it turned out. It looks super realistic, super like, you know, maple drizzer over some butter. And I cannot wait to get this painted. So the last time I did a little maple syrup um, theme on my little puppy plushie, everyone kept saying that the color that I painted the maple syrup was not maple syrup color at all. I fixed it twice, still not maple syrup color. And hopefully today we get an actually good maple syrup color. So right here I have some of my nail glosses that I mixed myself. I usually like to go for a really thick gloss. And then I have some brown paint, some yellow paint, some Mod Podge, the matte kind. And we're going to get started on painting this little drizzle right here. So I actually found the perfect maple syrup color. I will need to mix it, but this paint color has like no name to it. So the next time I want to paint something maple syrup color, well, I'm going to have a hard time finding it. But we're going to take our little paintbrush and we're going to start mixing up this paint to get the perfect maple syrup color. So once I get what looks like a maple syrup color, I start painting the hot glue. I did sand it before I start painting it so that the paint has a good grip to it. And we're going to do one simple coat. It does appear quite streaky. So we're probably going to have to do two coats, but that should not be a problem. All right, guys. So we got painted. We also got a gloss from my signature thick nail gloss. And now this is where I need your guys' help. So this is going to be a two-part series video. This is probably my first two-part video on my YouTube channel. But as you know, some waffles have berries. They have chocolate chips. They have bananas. And I need your help. I need to know if I should just leave the butter and maple syrup plain or if i should add these adorable little tiny red strawberries on top so make sure to comment down below which one you think is going to look best on this little teddy bear and thank you guys so much for watching and make sure you comment